My name is Dr. Jim Krause and this is another presentation on spinal cord injury outcomes. And today I would like to follow up on some previous recent presentations and I really want to present some information on familial income and life expectancy. And the reason that we look at familial income is because it is a variable that's available to us within the data that we can analyze and it reflects a lot of different things such as access to health care, several things that we do not directly have the opportunity to assess by virtue of the inclusion in our data. We're first going to show you a table on mortality and income and these are just crude mortality rates as related to familial income levels and as you can see income starts at the lowest level in the top left portion of the table and then gets increasingly higher up to a maximum of $75,000 or greater and as you'll notice also mortality is highest in the lowest income group and it tends to decrease as we go down the table with the lowest figure in $75,000 and greater. This is what it looks like graphically. You can see that there is a trend for the line to continue to go down. There's a couple of bumps in the line which we expect just some random differences but other than that there's a, a systematic relationship here and that you can see with the next graph where we draw a trend line through the data. This simply again shows the relationship of decreased mortality with higher income. So again income brings many benefits and one of the things is the uh, ability to sustain life for a longer time after a spinal cord injury. In this graph we show uh, survival curves as a function of familial income grouped into the three categories low, middle, and high income. And the probability of surviving is the blue line is for high income and as you can see that individuals of the highest income group have the greatest probability of surviving over time. And you can identify there are substantial differences when you look along the bottom of the graph where actual years of life expectancy are calculated for this example case of a 25 year old male. So in conclusion, looking at the research that we've conducted, there are distinctive relationships between familial income and life expectancy and this becomes very important when we think about access to services and whether a particular individual may have a disparity in relation to their life expectancy. The more that we can do to raise individuals income, create opportunities, the greater the life expectancy and then also if we can address some of the things that are related to income such as opportunities for health care then those things show promise for improving longevity after spinal cord injury. Thank you.